Okay, everyone, we are in week four of our Hidden Potential Online Bible Study. Can you believe it? Like halfway. We are halfway. And Wendy, I don't know if you know this, but typically with online Bible studies, what we see the trend to be is mm. people start off really strong, they're right. very excited, yeah. they have the time they're gonna read the book and study, mm. and then life happens, right? Right. Um, and maybe some people get behind or maybe they just don't finish. Right. And so what would you say to the woman who is really debating on whether or not she should stick with mm. hidden potential because life has just become right. very overwhelming? Well, first, one of the things I love about IBS is that you can do it anytime, anywhere. That's true. That is part of the beauty exactly. of online and Bible study. Exactly. And you can catch up really easy. Yes. So what I tell my um, Read Through the Word audience, I have a Read Through the Word class that I teach over on my website. And it's the same thing. It's like January, February, and then you get to Leviticus and you're like, ugh. <laughs> it's, it's about persistence, not perfection. Okay. And it's okay that you maybe don't get to watch the video, or it's okay that maybe you don't finish the whole chapter, or it's okay if you don't get to the questions or the journal yeah. part. You know, just do what you can right, and keep moving forward. Don't okay. stop. Because, see, that's, that's, again, what the enemy wants us to do, Kendra. Very true. It's like, oh, this is too hard. You've got too many other things going on. Because the enemy doesn't want us to know the truth and to live the truth. He because doesn't. he knows that it changes everything. Right, right. Okay, so persistence, yes. not perfection. Right. And do what you can do. So if you can't get to the questions at the end of each chapter, right. that's right. okay. Or if you can't listen to the audio of the possibility profile, exactly. that's it's okay. It's going to be there later, right? It's it will be there later. So that's right. Do life. Do life. That's good. All right, so we do want to get to what we have for you today. Mm. Wendy is going to be talking about... Am I valuable even though I feel damaged? Yes. And I have a feeling that a lot of us, really speaking to myself, mm. really connect to this question specifically because you see yes. the word damaged and you're like, right. you know what? There are some things that just aren't what they used to be or exactly. my past has really kind of put some grit into it. And so, mm -hmm. Wendy, I would love to talk yes. to you for the teaching. Exactly. And you think of that word frailty and it just mm. sounds like weak weak yes um not useful mm -hmm. of no value yeah. at all and um the thing with frailties is sometimes our frailties are something that we can control or change and sometimes our frailties mm -hmm. are things that we can't control or change right um for example you know meg shares this week um in the possibility profile yeah. of her frailty and it's a circumstance that she could change but has chosen not to, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So we have that option. So it really is all in perspective. Perspective is a hot word right now, It really right? is, <laughs> exactly. And as we were pausing before we did our little countdown to get started, I thought of um, Linda's daughter who is, will share her possibility mm. profile in Chapter 5. Um, who was born, she's 29, and she was born a normal birth, everything mm -hmm. was fine, um, and into her first few months of life began to have infantile seizures. Mm. And now, at 29, has the functionality of a two-year-old. And I was thinking of Dana, and I know Linda would not mind me sharing Dana's testimony. Um, Dana has a vocabulary of about five or six words. Mm. But she has a testimony. Yeah, that's good. And it's amazing because when you talk to Dana's dad, Linda's husband, Steve, he will tell you that Dana led him to the Lord. Wow. With her limited vocabulary and her beautiful smile and how she loved life, she led her daddy to the Lord. And that's their family testimony. And then also, I was thinking of another little girl. Um, and I used to keep her in the nursery at the church that I grew up in, and she was born with cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know anybody that has the love of Jesus on their face more than this little girl. And I don't have permission to mention her name, but it doesn't matter. Jesus yeah. knows her, and she loves Jesus. Yeah. So when you think of frailty, we don't have to think of weakness, mm -hmm. and we don't have to think of the fact that we're damaged. Right. Because what does the Bible say? Even in my weakness, he is strong. Absolutely. His love is made perfect Absolutely. in weakness. Yeah. But one of the questions that, as I was preparing 
for this lesson, one of the questions that came up and that I included in the book as well is, and I, I know that we've probably all asked this question in some form, is why would God, who sent his son, mm -hmm. for everyone to have a life that's full and abundant, John 10, 10, that's immeasurably more, right. why would he saddle someone with a frailty? Hmm. Like, you know, why was this little girl that I babysat and loved so much, and she's still alive, she's in her 30s, <laughs> late 30s. Oh gosh, she might be 40 now, because look at how old I am. Um, <laughs> Time flies. Exactly, you know? it flies, Whew. And I look at Dana, and I think, you know, why would God saddle and, and, and that's the way we think of right. it, right? Well, I appreciate you bringing that up because I'm sure we've all had these thoughts and we're like, we probably shouldn't question God right. because we know he has good plans. And so right. I appreciate you being vulnerable and saying, exactly. I've asked this. We want to ask God that. Right. I mean, some, some thoughts that I had just in our lesson today is, you know, why do I have to struggle financially? Mm. You know, I want to do things, but right now my frailty is my finances. Yeah. I, I, my month runs out before my, my money runs out before my month. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, why was I born not being able to see or not being able to hear? Mm -hmm. Those kind of questions will rob us of the joy that God has for us. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to look at a story in John chapter 9 that I believe will give us some insight to this question of why, why, why. Yeah. Um, Jesus um, is, has empowered his disciples at this point to do some healing. Hmm. And that would have been really, wouldn't that be neat? That would be so neat, Wendy, yes. To, to know that God would use us in such a way. Yeah. And not that we don't have miracles and healings now, but how neat would that be? Well, they were struggling with that. Mm -hmm. A dad brought, um, there was a man who was, uh, who had, was blind. Yeah. And um, was unable to be healed. At least that's what they thought. And, well, let me just read it. Chapter 9, John chapter 9. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked... Rabbi, who sinned? Mm. Who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Yeah. And unfortunately, that is really, that's a question that we probably all think about down deep inside is, what did I do wrong? Right, what did I do wrong? What happened to make this? Is it because I did X, Y, Z mm -hmm. that this happened? Right. You know? Well, we can feel punished based and, off past Oh, choices. wow, what a great point. And so we can really tie it back and be like, oh, this is happening exactly. because I did this. And here's the thing. We have to be really careful. Mm -hmm. um, you use the word punishment and circumstances, and um, a res sometimes things are a result of our sin. Mm -hmm. And we have consequences, consequences was the word I was, yes. I was searching for the word consequences. Sometimes things do happen mm -hmm. because we did do something wrong. So we have to be, again, we go back to those investigative prayers that we talked about right, before. Too. Um, but let's look at this in verse chapter 3. He says, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus said, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his mm -hmm. life. Yeah. And you know, I'll tell you, I've never thought of myself as having a frailty being something that would glorify God. Mm -hmm. It's something that I want to get rid of. I want to fix. I want right. to overcome. But God said, this was for my glory. Yeah. And what better, what better way could we use our lives than to glorify God? That's yeah. what we're supposed to do is glorify God. You know, in Psalm 139, and I know we've gone to this already, talking about that investigative prayer but I want you to hear these words. You might be sitting on the other camera thinking a lot of these same thoughts. Mm -hmm. But this is what God says. For you created my innermost being. This is 139, uh, starting with verse 13. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. 
I know that full well. My frame is not hidden from you. When I was made in a secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, my eyes saw, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days are um, ordained for me, written in your book, before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. Regardless of our frailties, we are precious to God and we are purposed. And we don't have to, we can accept those and trust God with those because we are a worthwhile possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Full of potential. Full of potential, exactly what we're studying Absolutely. in your book. And Wendy, when you were reading John 9, um, I have in quotes, so somebody obviously said this, and mm. I did not write who, but it says, the blindness was a backdrop for a blessing. Oh. And I think that's exactly what you kind of Absolutely. wrapped Absolutely. So. That's beautiful. Thank you I for sharing that. that. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us for our week four video. We're excited for you to experience chapter four for this week. And as we always say, when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. Have a great week.